Hi, welcome to Think Tech. We are bringing you technology, energy, diversity, and globalism here on this station. This show is Center Stage. I am your host, Donna Blanchard, proud managing director of Kumukuhua Theater. And my guest today is going to be a lot of fun to talk to. This is Mike Lewis. He is a trumpet player. Mike? Yes. Welcome to my show. Thank you, Donna. We have never met before. Is this we true? We haven't? Is this? I don't believe we have. Not I even in another life. I, I don't think we, we have. We just don't remember it. Oh. I think it was that much fun. Yeah. <laughs> Rock stars that we are. <laughs> it's possible. Yeah. Do you think? Maybe. Okay. We will see how the conversation goes, and, and then I will let you know. And maybe it'll come back. And maybe right? it'll come back to us. Like euphoric re recall. <laughs> euphoric recall. I like the sound of that. Okay. But, okay. okay what? Okay. Go what? Before you run away with this train, I want to say a couple of things. When I got on your website and I read the list, Mike Lewis Trumpet, is that MikeLewisTrumpet.com? I read the list of people that you have played your right. trumpet with. Yes. It was like my childhood unfolding, like Sonny and Cher. That's and, where we met. You know, maybe that's what it, what <laughs> right, it was. When you were a child. Uh, I, yes. You, you have an amazing list of people that you have played with. And it's a lie. I never played with any of those people. <laughs> Here's what I want to know. Go. Uh, and I'm going to ask you all about your background and how you got okay. into it and all of that. And, mm -hmm. and Big Band Mondays here sure. in Waikiki. But um, after that list of like Ella Fitzgerald and, and uh, Tony Orlando, that's where I, I talk about my childhood, people who had oh, variety Tony. shows in my childhood. <laughs> you yep, tie a yellow ribbon. Tony, sure, of course, yes. Okay, so before we finish the show today, before the We're half hour now? is up, We're I want to know who your favorite was to play with, okay. who is the most trouble to play with. Oh. You know, oh. I, I'd oh, really trouble. like to hear some Let's of go the, to the stories trouble. about who is the most trouble well, to play with. Well, um, I spent a year with the Buddy Rich uh, band, and, and that was uh, a phenomenal experience because it was the best band I had ever played with, and, and Buddy was a taskmaster and, and sometimes very difficult to work with. And he was very tough on his band because he demanded perfection every night. And there was the risk and intimidation and tension every evening that you might be fired from the gig if you didn't play well. So it was very nerve-wracking. But oh. it brought out a certain energy on an, and on a nightly basis. That band was just smoking, and it was wonderful, and it was the greatest experience. And I got on that band as a result of Eric Mish Miyashiro, who is a trumpet player from Hawaii that went to McKinley. And uh, he went to Berkeley School of Music in uh, Boston, and he got on the band. And then he ne they needed a trumpet player for recording, and he asked me here in Hawaii, "Would you like to be on the band?" And of course, I did. So uh, Eric Miyashiro from Hawaii got me on the Buddy Rich band, and I was just amazed that there were two trumpet players from Hawaii on a on a mainland band that had the, h the highest energy band, in incredible. Uh, adventuresome, exciting band, and and the trumpet players were from ha Hawaii, which is a traditionally mellow place. Yeah, playing with this incredibly exciting band, and we were kind of the trumpet players had a lot to do with the energy, so it was great. How, so how did you? So you said yes an awful lot in your life. That's that's the impression that I get looking one at one too many resume. times, as far as I'm concerned. One, just yeah. the one. Have you ever said yes too often? <laughs> uh, yes, but it doesn't stop me from saying it the next time. And the great fact that you said yes to my question would, didn't include that, that many yeses. <laughs> that was honest. I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. right? Okay. Right. Uh, so do you have a philosophy about if, if someone says, will you come and do this for me, do you, are well, you more likely to say yes than no? Yes, because I'm here, Donna. You I, said I, yes to me. You didn't even know. You thought you were just coming to talk with me. I thought you owed me money. I thought, <laughs> and you do, but we'll talk about that. I, well, good luck, brother. <laughs> what? <laughs> I, oh, okay, so let's go back to the beginning then. I of played what? trumpet in high school. I haven't picked it up since 1980. I thought you looked familiar. One? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe in the 70s. Why you, not? You must have picked it up. I, you know, I always enjoyed that instrument, but... Uh, I, I guess it just didn't work out. I, I went, I went the choir way instead. So you are, you are like a choir. I, at yeah, I went from the ba in band in high school. I switched over right. to choir. And now you're in choiring. And I now I'm in choiring. Right. I'm one of those minds. In uh, I went there. Right. Okay. Okay. So Thank you, you started playing. When do you, do your parents play? My dad owned a music store in Mineola, New York. Oh, so it was basically, okay. which instrument do you want to play, Mike? And uh, the, I was always attracted to the trumpet from day one. I've started when I was eight years old, so that's, uh, um, what is that, 51 years now? 
Why, why the trumpet? 53 years. What's that? I'm sorry. You, you Math. Look, you look really good for your age, by the way. Why the trumpet? I was very young when I was born. <laughs> <laughs> I got him. I made someone laugh. So, but he's... It's Zuri. All right. Zuri? Hi, Zuri. You just yeah. made the... Where's Zuri the, from? The state Zurich? overlord laugh. Zuri's from Minnesota. Lav, did you say? Laugh. Oh, laugh. Oh, I thought you said lav, like what? it was a country of Latvia. <laughs> Minnesota, Latvia. What? Why the trumpet, Mark? <laughs> Mark. <laughs> Name wrong, and now your tone just went up. Are you mad at me? Oh what happened? No. What's the matter? Why, Why are you yelling at me? Is this <laughs> Talk to me. Why the trumpet? Because the sound was... I'm going to ask myself the questions from now on, okay. all right? <laughs> because I love the sound of it. It's such a commanding yeah. instrument. It still is. Mm. It, it's a take charge instrument. Um, it, it, I just love the way it functions in a band. Uh, you know, I, the, the, I, I lived in New York for the last 20 years, and um, and I, I was the, often the only person in the band that didn't have any microphone or amplification. Oh, yeah. Because the instrument is just so dominant, and the, the instrument bleeds into everybody else's microphone, and it just it's a it's a powerful instrument, and I just I just love that feeling and. Uh, when, it's, when the instrument is working right, it's just there's nothing like it. And I had a fantastic gig, if I might mention, the other night at the Blue Note, we did a tribute to Miles Davis. We had an excellent mm -hmm. crowd. I had a fantastic band with DeShannon Higa and Rick Broadwell and Eldred Allo and Dan Del Negro, Darrell Pellegrini and Dean Taba, and uh, we did a sensational show. It was just wonderful. Oh, I'm yeah. sorry I missed that. I love that place. That must be an awesome place to play. Yeah, and, but they're not too happy with you. You didn't pay your bill the last time. Oh. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, I ran out on that. I know. That's okay. <laughs> That's okay. Um, but the acoustics are good, and it looks like they always draw really good crowd. People who just just really want some music. Excellent music venue, and they have the best acts in the world. I, it's, I, now I told my audience, I can't believe we have this kind of quality club in the middle of uh, Waikiki. And I actually played the Blue Note when it was in New York City with the Buddy Rich Band, which was a real thrill. So uh, Blue Note is, has quite a reputation for providing quality jazz yeah. entertainment. They attract, they have attract you, both and the And you haven't been there yet? Artists. I have. Oh. I was there. I saw Jake Shimabukuro play there. That was you? That was oh, me. No. Okay. <laughs> that, that was pretty, it was pretty full for Jake, got to say. Well, he's, he's Jake. <laughs> he's Jake. You know? He's like, yeah, the and I'm son Mark. coming home. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, <laughs> I do apologize for that. You That's almost derailed me on my own show. Okay, so wait. See, stay I'm kind of getting... Uh, stay uh, with yeah, me. Yeah. No, no, I'm holding me you what, what, Stay what, with me. What, 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 okay. okay, eight years old, you were attracted to that instrument. You said, That's the one, Dad, I want to play. And he said, Okay, did he show you how? How did you learn? No, he hit me in the face so hard. No, he, he said, Mike. I can't <laughs> imagine why. <laughs> Were you like this as a child? <laughs> I still am a child. And that's good. That's why you say yes all the time, and that's awesome. And no. Oh. Because well. children like to say no. Oh. Because they get more oh. attention. Oh, yeah. yeah. And that explains a lot. Okay. What was the question? My dad. My dad said, of course, here's the trumpet. But what happened is my, the trumpet my dad gave me, which is ironic because he's a, he was a musical instrument repairman, the trumpet had a hole in it, oh. which... Um, not at the end, where it normally has a hole, and <laughs> the beginning, where it has a mouthpiece, but someplace else in the horn had a little crack. So um, for about three years, I was playing a trumpet that leaked. So I think that's where I developed, like, really good lungs, and I was, like, overplaying and uh, developed quite a big sound as a little oh, child, wow. which got a lot of attention. Mm -hmm. And then my father, as I was growing up, was my biggest fan, God bless him, and he would bring me to great jazz clubs to sit in with these old-timers, and I would sit in, and, of course, they loved me because I was a little kid with a big sound that, you know, uh, you know and, and that kind of started me off. But I, I, I learned quite a bit from older musicians and have a great respect for... The, the the jazz uh, icons and you know I've just loved loved the business and loved the music. Wow. Yeah. Okay, so you were being introduced to all of these people who were impressed by you at an early age. Right. Who was the first person who said, "Come play with me"? You know, this is a, this is a great question because I really feel part of the success in this business is just 
answering the phone and showing up. We talked about this about this interview, how we haven't met, and we just kind of, I, I didn't know what this was today, and met you on the street, and you said, would you like to do an interview? Okay. That's pretty much how it You're happens. Right. Well, it's, it's the same with the music. The phone rings, would you like, can you do the gig? And you just keep showing up, and the phone rings, and you keep showing up. That's how this, one, this, how this business grows one step at a time. Yeah. And thankfully, that continues today. People actually call me and ask me to play in their bands, and I'm very grateful, and, and, and that's the way it works. Yeah. So um, my big break, I think, came in uh, when I moved to Hawaii from New York in 1975, and I was playing the Steve Lawrence and Edie Gourmet show. I don't know if anybody remembers them. My they childhood. Were, right? I love Steve. <laughs> And and I, and on the bandstand were these trumpet players from Los Angeles. I'll mention them. Uh, uh, the rehearsal there was Ollie Mitchell, Jerry Hay, Rick, Ron King, and myself. And then later on that afternoon, flying in from Los Angeles were Chuck Finley and Gary Grant, replacing Jerry Hay and Ron King. Now. It, you know, most people don't know who these people are, but these are the biggest names in Los Angeles studio history. They've recorded with everybody, Michael Jackson and Al Jarreau. They've Earth, Wind & Fire. These are the best cats. So when I was sitting amongst them at age 20, New Year's Eve in 1975, I just couldn't believe the power of the trumpet. I was so blown away, and I thought, wow, can I do that? Can I actually do that? And uh, that kind of started it. You know, I thought, well, maybe I can. So while I was a, a business uh, student at Chaminade University getting my business degree, which I got, I started devoting more time to practicing and working on it. So actually, my musical roots have a lot to do with Hawaii. I became inspired here in Hawaii. And we talked about this earlier, about Hawaii is, there's a lot of opportunity here, you know? And this, this street that you're on, all these placards of history and how things got started here in Hawaii it really intrigues me because Obviously, some people came here and they thought, wow, this place is really beautiful. Can I do this here? Can I have a yeah. big band here? Can I play trumpet here? And um, so I, I always felt there was lots of opportunity here for that, that kind of thing. And had I stayed in New York, I wouldn't have been a musician because there were so many good people there. Yeah. I would have said, oh, maybe I better do something else like my parents were encouraging me to do. Maybe you should do something else. But they, Didn't they all? It was their job. Right. Okay, we're going to take a break, oh. and by the way, I love it that you refer to our elevator ride as, you know, when we were talking earlier, <laughs> we literally just met. But we're, okay, we're going to take a little break, and we're going to come back, and we're going to talk about Big Band Mondays and all of that Good. kind of stuff. Good. Okay? All right, thank you. Okay. Thank you, Donna. We're going to be right back. Please stay put. I know you don't want to miss the rest of this oh, interview. No, this, this could be really <laughs> we'll exciting. Be right back. <laughs> This is Steve Katz. I'm a marriage and family therapist, and I do shrink wrap, which is now going to every other week, all during the summer and maybe forever after. Take care of your mental health this summer. Have a good time. Do what's fun and take good care of yourself. Bye-bye. Hello and aloha. My name is Raya Salter, and I am the host of Power Up Hawaii, where Hawaii comes together to figure out how we're going to work towards a clean and renewable energy future. We have exciting conversations with all kinds of stakeholders, everyone who needs to come together to talk about renewable energy, be they engineers, advocates, lawyers, utility executives, musicians, or artists, to see how we can come together to make a renewable future. Tuesdays at 1 p.m. Hey, how you doing? Uh, welcome to Abachi Talk. My name is Andrew Lanning. I'm your co-host. And we have a nice program here every Friday at 1 o'clock uh, on Think Tech Studios where we talk about technology and we have a little bit of fun with it. So join us if you can. Thanks. Aloha. Hi, we're back and we are live. This is Center Stage on the Think Tech Hawaii Digital Network. I'm your host, Donna Blanchard, proud managing director of Kumu Hawaii Theater. And we are coming to you from Pioneer Plaza in the heart of downtown Honolulu, very near Kumu Kuhui Theater. We're talking with trumpeteer Mike Lewis. We say that? Trumpeteer. Trumpeteer, yeah, like musketeer? Yeah. Or musketeer? Trumpeteer. Musketeer. Let's go with that. Like, okay. You know, like All right. musketeer. All right. Okay. So uh, we were introduced by a mutual friend, James Charisma, who of course. said is, is to that each is, of us, you guys should get together. And we both said, yes, okay. Right, because uh, he has, what he, he is Charisma. Is that his real name? Right. Is that his real we name? We can't. We can't. It, we, do you know? It's, it's top secret. Oh, it is. Okay. It's a great name. But he met you at Big Band Monday. Yeah. So well, yes. Yeah. 
Yes, he came down, and we had just celebrated our one-year anniversary at the Pagoda, and it was fabulous. We had a fabulous crowd. I have a 16-piece band, and I featured all kinds of vocals. I just saw a little clip of Janai w sang uh, with our band, yeah. and Renee Balarosa, and uh, and uh, Rachel Gonzalez, and uh, and Jason Nagashi. We have all these great people that want to sit in with our big band, and we did Tony Bennett and Lady Gaga's "Lady Is a Tramp." which I called Lady is a Trump, but that wasn't funny. You did, no, that's not funny. It wasn't funny. <laughs> but Trump is the first five letters of trumpet. Oh, man. That was kind of Don't, funny. Now you're going to want to switch to cornet. Bam. That's corny. <laughs> oh. oh. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> what did you say? Ouch. That's Ouch. Oh, said, yeah. okay. Um, no, I didn't swear on You didn't? No. Do you ever? I have. Really? In I my think head. I what are you Not thinking? today. What are you thinking? <laughs> Not today, but yeah, yeah, we used to be able to swear. We used to be able to swear on Think Tech when I originally started this show oh, a little over three. Not that this interview is about me, but a little it's, over three years ago when I started this show. It's all about you. Isn't that your website? <laughs> That's my what, what is it? email. What is Oh, it's you don't give that out. No. I just did, but you don't know what the ad is. So. Um, I, when we first started the show, the, sh the, the, the studio, everything was smaller. And uh, I remember Jay Fidel saying, well, yeah, you can swear. I asked him, can I swear? What if I have a guest who swears? Right. Says, he says, yeah, you can say whatever you want. There's no FCC here. Well, we've gotten a little bigger and a little more legit and, you know, a, a little bigger board. FCC. -E yeah, we can't do that anymore. So, But you don't seem to be having any problem with that. Oh, my gosh. I want to swear so bad right now. <laughs> I am really do it in your head. In your head. That's what I do. Just think it. It'll come out, you know, in the attitude. Um, okay, so you, came, when you moved to Hawaii, was that with your parents? That was a parent thing that you went to Chaminade? He's, he's going through a litany of sailor speak right now. Yeah, okay. I'm done. Uh, you went to Chaminade. You, the first person who said, come play in my band, let's go do this. Was my wife. Was she was the first person I met, and she didn't even have a band, but she actually said, come play in my band, and I thought that was so sexy. I just, I just thought that was beautiful, and she didn't even have a band. She was the first girl I met. <laughs> Isn't that a really romantic story? That was story? pretty awesome. Isn't it? Yeah. Too bad it's not true. But, no, it was. <laughs> and it you is. said, yes. Yes. Okay, where does Sunny and Cher come in? Can we get to them? Because, oh. gosh. Well, she had been calling me incessantly. Mike, can I come to Hawaii and hang out with you? All right, Cher. No, actually, it was a show and uh, in November of, I think, it was uh, 1976. And actually, at that point in their career, uh, Sunny and Cher were no longer together, but contractually, they were obliged to do shows together. Uh -huh. And uh, so they still continued to work together, which was a terrific show. And working with both of them was a lot of fun. And, um, and the opening act was Andy Kaufman, oh. who hadn't become a, a big hit yet. He was a big oh. star in 1976. But I knew who he was, and I had a great time with him, teasing him. What a tremendous mind and talent that guy was. Yeah, Andy oh Kaufman, gosh. the opening act. I remember him when he used to do the underdog yeah, here like, I come to save man, the day. He had such a warped, beautiful, warped sense of humor. But you like warped. I do. I've seen your house, and it's on an angle. And if we're in Hawaii, everything's I know, on but it's it's moving thing. because it's on the lava flow <laughs> on the Big Island. So, oh man, Andy Kaufman. Yeah. And you got him right away, did you? you oh yeah, him? and I, I remember backstage, I offered him an olive, and I just thought that was you'd have to do something obtuse with him, right? To and he looked at me kind of crazy. Then I, he knew I was crazy, so it was fine after that. But, you know, g getting to this thing about me working with this great talent, you know, I'm not a wealthy man, but in terms of, of enriching my life with working with great talent, I know I've worked with the greatest on the planet. And to me, sharing the bandstand and being with amongst people with great talent and charisma. Oh. Uh, bing. 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 bing, 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 bing. <laughs> To me, that's wealth. Yeah. That's the richness of life. Oh, yeah. Clearly. I, I absolutely believe. I absolutely agree with you. And, and do you travel a lot, or do you mostly work with people when they come here? Um, you know, it would be nice if they came here. That's one of the nice things about living here in Hawaii, is when people do come to visit, they're in such great moods. It's Hawaii. Hanging out with a, a great jazz talent in New York City, you know, they got a cab to catch, and they just got yelled at by somebody on the street. It's not quite so great. But here in Hawaii... 
chill out. It's a wonderful place to hang with people. So I invite people to come to Hawaii all the time, and of course I try to put them to work with my big band and other gigs that I might be producing. So it, yeah. So I would I would prefer people coming here, but I I do travel. I'm going to be going up to Seattle uh, soon to do a, a, a jazz ed program, uh, doing jazz programs for kids, which is just terrific because mm. kids understand jazz better than anyone because they understand how to play, and they can immediately see that we're playing. Yeah. Immediate. They, they get just it. Want to get in there? They got it. Oh, that's cool. So we don't have to teach anything. We just we're doing what they do naturally. So, so you do travel, and, yes, uh, uh, and I think that is good for the soul. Oh yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Get your, it shakes up your world when you get in a of different course. place in the world. Of course. Have you ever worked with? You know what? I just thought of something. There's a woman I interviewed, Natalia Perus, who plays the saw. Have you heard of this woman? No, but One she. One of these big carpenter saws. Right, but she did work on your house in Hilo, <laughs> and that's <laughs> the reason that things are starting to move. No, this is a real woman who plays. The saw is the most right, one of the most right, haunting sounds right. you can hear. She plays in the subway in New York, and um, I, I found her because she was in a movie playing her song. Right, and she and had a big bandage on her arm, and I was real curious about that now. But a subway in New York, uh, that's a very popular <laughs> venue for musicians. As a matter of fact, you need a license. Yes. You knew that because some, some areas are so popular for uh, generating income from tips and stuff that, uh, you know, uh, musicians can bicker and have, like, I want to work there. So you have to actually reserve a spot in the, in yeah. the subway system. Yeah, I told her, I'm going to be out there around the holidays. When can I come see you? And she said, oh, I haven't gotten my schedule yet. Right, <laughs> right. <laughs> All right. And it's just an interesting sound. I and if it and the great thing about doing the SAW Act is if they don't tip, you can threaten them with an injury. You, you've got a weapon. You, you know, it's, it's not, or else. It's right is there. it an electrical saw? No, it's just a. Oh, okay. okay. So that's <laughs> musical. Like, if you can. She doesn't do that. <laughs> you can vary the voltage. You know, she plays it with a bow. You know what I'm talking about. I like that technique. <laughs> <laughs> right? You can. T I'm not sure if I did that right. I'm a singer. Have I mentioned oh. that? <laughs> no. <laughs> I'll just say that. Yeah, Perhaps really you should sing with instrument. my big band. Oh, Who I'd do you like? To, yeah. Let me guess. Oh. Rosemary Clooney. Oh, well, who doesn't? I know. And you know, I worked with her. And my favorite a Christmas movie is White Christmas, and she's oh. in that. And she actually plays Bing Crosby's love interest. And I think he was in his 50s then, and she was only like 28. She's young. Yeah. But she actually played the older sister of Vera Allen, and Vera was older than her. I didn't know that. But this, we digress. <laughs> I would love to come sing with you sometime. Yeah, just, just. Throw me out there. I'll be happy to do that. Without an I'm arrangement? Thinking, yeah. We should have an arrangement. <laughs> okay. We can have an How arrangement. How about... Oh, let's talk... we got to talk about the show. We've, got, we've only got a couple minutes left. But, <laughs> yeah, I will totally, totally do that. Panic. Let's talk about your uh, holiday show. Yes. Oh. Oh. Friends of Ellington Jazz? Yeah. Friends of Ellington. It's a, uh, a tribute to Duke Ellington. And we're going to be doing Duke's Nutcracker Suite, which is a piece he wrote. It's kind of a holiday piece. And it's a very difficult piece, and it's going to be beautiful. We're going to be doing that, plus some other great Ellingtonia hits. And we're going to have a 16-piece band, and it's going to be conducted by Tommy James, who is, a, uh, is the uh, orchestra leader for the Duke Ellington Orchestra, and he lives in Hawaii. Oh, wow. Yeah. So Tommy's going to be with us, and we're going to have a fantastic show December 6th. Two shows, six thirty and nine o'clock. At the pagoda. At the Is that no, it? at the blue note. Oh, at the blue note. Blue note. Oh, and we're at the pagoda every second and fourth Monday of the month. So we'll be there on uh, November twenty eighth. We're going to be there uh, December twelfth. We're going to be doing a little Sinatra tribute because it's Sinatra's birthday, and we'll be there also December twenty sixth. And on the 28th, we're featuring a, a trombone player from Los Angeles named Les Benedict, who's a, the tuba player on the Grammy Awards every year. He's going to be here, and we're going to be featuring him. So we've got some great stuff. And uh, coming the new year, we're moving the big band to a place called Jazz Minds on Kapilani Boulevard. Oh. So we'll be there every second and fourth Monday come the new year. Okay, good. It's, uh, I just heard about it recently, and right. it's, a sec it's a secret that shouldn't be kept. Everybody should be Yeah, it's out now. There it's out now. That, and we're there. announcing it on this show, so now it's billions. Now. Everybody, everybody knows. The billions of people. <laughs> and I noticed the backdrop for us, I think, is outer space. Is that what it's going to be? It's a, it's a stage. It's, can you see? It's lights. Oh. I saw something else that had pieces, celestial uh, bodies. That's another show. Oh, it is another show. I thought because we can invite people from outer space to our show. <laughs> they can hear you, I'm sure. 
Have you ever thought about doing anything else? We've got one minute. I really need to know. Interviews. I'm, I'm, I think I want to do interviews the rest of my I've enjoyed this so much. I think that's what I want to do. <laughs> you yep. can come back. Tomorrow? Can you be that guy that I call and say, oh, I just had a guest drop out. Will you come in and talk I to me again? drop out? Like, in what way? Like, physically? It just, to, oh, I'm Do sick. they drop? They, I, it sounds like it sometimes. All right, yeah. Oh, I'm I will, sick. I can't You can do call this. me. As a matter of fact, I'm going to stay here for the next one and just do a cameo. <laughs> just talk to the next yep. person who comes yep. up. I'm just going to okay. keep talking. I'm not leaving. That would be awesome. Yeah. Uh, do you ever feel challenged? One more question. Yeah. I got to slip in. Um, you said the show is very challenging. The piece Duke Ellington. Yes. Uh, Nutcracker Nut Sweet. Do you you still feel challenged by music? Oh. Company? You've been doing this for a long time. More so than ever. There's so much. It's infinite. Music is infinite. There's always more you can learn. That's why I'm so attracted to music. And, and we all are, because our musical minds and hearts are constantly growing. We're constantly hearing new things. We're constantly hearing things that remind us of something in the past. We're, it's just infinite. And that's, it's, it's better now than it's ever been. My high school jazz band got together at a 40 year reunion. And it wasn't the chess club or the knitting club that got back together. It was the jazz band because we all realized that the gift we got in high school kept growing. Oh, wow. And these are doctors and lawyers and accountants, and they all came back and we all played together. It was, very, it was like going to church. It was spiritual. You feel like your life experience influences the, your music? Oh I know, like, God. for actors and oh. writers always say this. Do you feel that way as a musician? The also? blues. I mean, I have a story to tell which will be our next interview. The next interview, yes. we're going to talk but about that. But you can hear that story when you, play me, when you hear me play trumpet. I, okay. I tell that story oh. musically. I mean, that's why, I, that's another reason I do it. It's an, a, a great uh, resource of, of feelings and emotions that come out when we play. Oh, yeah, the blues. Wow. We got a little clip from your website oh. showing right now. Who's this is a band I played with uh, in New York called uh, Dr... Uh, uh, Dr. K in the Motown Review, this is someplace in New Jersey, that saxophone player there, Roger Byam, he's the Roberta Flax uh, saxophonist, and uh, oh, wow. I forget, I even forget what this song is, but this is, we're just jamming, this, the band leader brought us out in front of the <laughs> stage, and I'm just going for it. Yeah. That's awesome. And I think Roger plays the first solo, or maybe I do. Here I go. I'm doing something. Now you're doing a solo. I'm you doing something. You can hear him if you I go can't. to the website. Thank you. i got to wrap up. Good. Thank you very much for being here. Oh, I'm glad you showed up, even not having any idea what were you, you were getting I into. I still don't. And I'm more confused <laughs> now that we finished it. Link. We'll talk about it later. Next time you come on. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you very thank you, much for being here. There's a few people here in the studio. I would like to thank Robert McLean, who's our floor manager today, who just left us. He's in the he went to the bathroom. Okay. Uh, Zuri Bender, our studio overlord, who is in my ear, and Jay Fidel, who somehow manages to put all of this together. Join us next week here on Center Stage. Happy Thanksgiving.